Are these high-speed filaments really worth the extra money, or are they just another marketing gimmick to sell you something that you don't need? Let's find out. Future Logan here editing this video, and I noticed I said the phrase PETG a lot. So I'm going to make it interesting. When Flashforge originally reached out about sending me their Adventurer 5M Pro, I inquired about doing a giveaway for you guys, and they agreed. So we're very close to hitting 10,000 subscribers on the channel, and that is kind of the mark that I had set for this giveaway. So what I need you to do if you want to be part of that giveaway, or at least have some extra entries in that giveaway, is leave me a comment down below and let me know how many times throughout this video I actually said the phrase PETG. And the first person with the right answer will get 10 extra entries into winning one of the FlashForge machines. You'll have a choice between the standard Adventurer 5M, the Adventurer 5M Pro behind me, or their new 85X four color system when it comes out. And the person with the right answer is also gonna get a free spool of filament of your choice. So have fun with it and may the quickest person win. To keep things consistent, we're gonna be using the Bamboo Lab P1P today. We're gonna load up some Elegoo Rapid PETG in AMS slot two and some ESUN standard PETG in AMS slot three. Then we're gonna print out the same exact model using the same file on the printer. And then we're gonna compare the results and see if one actually looks any different than the other. Does the high speed filament really perform any better on the machine at the high speeds or can you get away with just the regular stuff? Probably should fix that first though. Yeah, it's good. Let's see if we can grab that out of there real quick. This is always a fun task. Nope, oh, come on. You almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. There we go. This one might perform a little bit interesting in the AMS. I can tell you for sure it's not going to like that damage spool, but it's going to deal with it. Let's go get the ESUN loaded in there. One of the things the AMS doesn't enjoy very much is light spools, specifically the Elegoos I've found. We'll see how the ESUN performs. It seems to have more of a sealed edge there versus the Elegoo, which breaks apart, but that's not really what we're testing today. Let's hop into Orca Slicer and get some files picked out and sliced to do our tests. All right, so we've settled on three walls, four top and bottom layers, 10% gyroid infill. This should be plenty strong enough to hold pieces together. And this is just a test. This isn't really for something we're going to use in actual woodworking. We're just trying to see how it prints if the actual print settings themselves make a difference. So I've got the same settings. We're going to set it up for the Elegu High Speed PETG print. We're going to use AMS slot two for this. Uh, we'll have to come back in here and send it over for the uh, ESUN on AMS slot three. All right, the rapid PETG just finished up on the P1P. Initial results, overhangs look good. Pretty much everything looks good about this one. Gonna get this off the build plate though. We'll swap the file out for the ESUN standard PETG and we'll rerun it. All right, so this is the ESUN PETG being printed out right now, standard PETG. Now we're getting to that high speed. Let's see how this stuff actually performs. He's having some difficulty. Could be due to the fact that he's being sliced to the filament profile. It's not calibrated for it. You can see right there what I'm talking about. All right, and this just finished up. This is the ESUN standard PETG running on the same profile. Well, I don't, I don't really have to explain this one. Let's take it off the plate and compare it with the one out of the Rapid PETG. Taking a look at the initial results from the Elegoo Rapid PETG, we can see it's a nice overall clean quality print. Layer lines all look good. And again, this was printed at a 0.26 millimeter layer height. So some of the text on the side might not be completely legible, but I'm not gonna dock any of these for that. Overall, the print quality looks awesome. Layer lines look good, no ringing. Top layer looks just as reliable. Let's take a look at the ESUN PETG and see how that one came out. All right, we've got the ESUN on here now, and right off the bat, we can see it had quite a few issues. I'm not sure if the extrusion rate wasn't high enough as far as the flow rate goes. Was the filament wet? 
Uh, there's just a lot of overall printing defects. I let it run for the purposes of this test, but you could see pretty much from layer like 10 and up that there wasn't going to be a successful print. Top layers are really messy, stringing on the inside. To me, this seemed like something that was due to the filament being wet. So I did throw it into the S4 filler dryer for eight hours, and I'm going to reprint this one uh, when the filament is all dry to see if that makes a difference. But so far, for PETG anyway, it's looking like maybe the rapid does have some sort of meaning to it. So while the ESUN PETG is drying to do our retest to make sure that wasn't our issue, I'm going to go ahead and print the PLA tests. So we've got sky blue from Elegoo there, and then just their standard white rapid PLA+. Plus. I'm going to slice it using the profile that I used for this and this. I print both of these with the same profile, so I'm pretty familiar with how these work, but Never actually put them side by side to see if one actually prints better than the other. So let's get into the computer, slice the PLA files, and see how they look. So the white had a little extrusion issue there, some ringing around the edges. Overall though, not a bad quality piece, just a little bit of the text on the side there, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Let's get the sky blue one sliced up, sent over to the machine and see if there's any difference between the two. All right, and our standard PLA print just finished up. So far looking like pretty similar results to what we saw with the Rapid PLA. Let's get them over to the bench and take a deeper look at them. And taking a look at the Elegoo Rapid PLA Plus, initial results, again, very good quality. There's a little bit of ringing about halfway up where it transitions from printing the higher speeds to going around the text there. But overall, it's hard to get that quality result with that 0.26 millimeter layer height. If we had gone down to a 0.18 or a 0.20 even, uh, we probably would see some different results when it comes to the cleanliness of the text. Top surface looks good. No issues that I see with this piece other than that text we mentioned. Now we've got the Sky Blue Elegoo PLA. This is just their standard PLA. You can see the print quality again looks really good. Very little ringing in this one actually. Uh, as compared to the white one, this is actually a cleaner print, sliced with the same profile, printed at the same speeds. If we take a look at the bottom surface, you can see a nice clean first layer there. Pull in the white one and take a look at the bottom surface on that. A little bit more difficult to see just because the white is hard to focus on. And a nice clean bottom surface on that as well. Doesn't seem to make much of a difference when it comes to the PLA prints. I'm going to go reprint that eSun one now that the filament is all dried. I want to see if that makes a difference. If it doesn't, and that will kind of give us our answer as far as PETG goes. All right, so I've had this in the S4 filler dryer from Sunlu for about eight hours. Let's go swap this guy out, and then we can rerun the PETG file that we had in there before. So this is after it's been put through the dryer for about eight hours, six to eight hours. I actually think it's coming out worse than the first time. So this could be an issue with the eSun PETG itself. Could be related to being, you know, calibrated and sliced for Elegoo PETG. But again, I've sliced all of my PETG with this profile. The only one I've had an issue with is the PETG HF. And all I had to do was slow down the cooling settings. So it was nothing really to do with the speed itself. Like it never came out looking this bad. It could just mean that the Rapid actually is doing something in this case. Needless to say, I'm going to stop this print because we already have our answer. Like it's already a bad quality print. There's no point in continuing this one on. All right. And just to rule out any possibility with the eSun not being a good spool or something being wrong with it, I've swapped it out for the AnyCubic PETG that's just a standard PETG. I'm going to rerun that same file. The only thing I'm concerned about in this case is the AMS does not like small spools. It tends to like rip them up or the rollers stop spinning at some points, it seems like, and just kind of yanks the piece and then it gets jammed. So we'll have to keep an eye on that too. All right. So far, so good with the AnyCubic PETG. No issues that I can see. 
Again, we're using the same exact profile we were using for the Rapid PETG and the eSun. Maybe there's just not something quite right with the eSun because this is looking pretty great. So my suspicions were sort of correct, I guess. It's not 100% on what exactly caused the eSun to turn out like it did, but it definitely did not turn out the way I would have hoped it would. The Anycubic, on the other hand, looks great. And when we put the Anycubic and the Elegoo side by side, we can see they are virtually uh, indistinguishable aside from the color. If you had told me these were two separate brands of filament, I would not have guessed that. So what are some of the key takeaways from today's test? I think with the PLA, virtually indistinguishable in terms of the rapid PLA and the standard PLA. When we look at the results with the PETG between the ESUN and the Elegoo, it did appear at first glance that perhaps the rapid part did make a difference. But upon further testing with the Anycubic, we're able to see that maybe it doesn't make a difference or maybe it doesn't make a difference with every filament brand. So maybe test some different ones out. For me, I tend to buy my blacks, whites, and grays in the Rapid PLA+. Plus, and I've just done that from the beginning. I have the filament profiles in there. My files look good. So I just haven't changed what I buy for that reason. But aside from that, I do believe there are some pigment differences between the standard PLA and the Rapid PLA. But I cannot confirm that because I have gotten different spools of Rapid PLA+, Plus that's different in terms of the pigment. So could just be a quality control thing on their end. Not really sure. It doesn't make too much of a difference for me in my case, but I think overall there probably isn't much of a difference when it comes to the rapid and standard PLA. So if you like the colors that you can find with standard, I wouldn't worry too much about not being able to find those colors in a rapid PLA. And then for the dog keychains, I tend to mix them together even. I use rapid PLA for the blacks and the whites, like I mentioned. But my browns and some of the different colors that you might find uh, in terms of like the dog's eyes, those are all standard PLA and they combine together just fine. They all print with the same print settings and I've never had an issue with it. Let me know down in the comments below what kind of filament you use and what your results have been so far. Smash that like button down below if you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time, folks. Take care.